at this point, everybody should comfortably be able to construct out of this boundary box by utilizing kind of like a top profile and those side profiles, a body inside our boundary box that, for example, has sloped sides, so are slightly arced from each side, and our top and our bottom part are straight flat. And just to, to repeat kind of like the method, so you see when I have kind of like a box like this and I would like to create those lines, all I need to do is to work with profiles. So you see those profiles are projected on the one side of my box and those profiles flat are projected on the other side. So you see they are straight flat. And I also have those profiles on the top. And now to figure out where, for example, um, those objects, uh, those lines will touch each other. You see, for example, here I have a small line. So you see those profiles with this line going to the vanishing point then those uh, profiles from the side, for example, let me remove this one, with those lines going to the vanishing point, and you will find actually this point where they cut, and that is also where this arc, for example, ends in. And this is then how, for example, we can create this body with the top part being flat and those sides slightly arced and this line, this edge is moved inwards. However, where I would like you to end with this assignment is also have a bent top and in addition on this bent top correctly constructed the openings for the toast to slide. So let's take a look maybe what a possible approach for this would be. So I know that I have, for example, those dimensions. My boundary box and, for example, the openings for my toast. I'm going to hide this line for a moment. So how, how do I actually construct first this bent surface from kind of like this model. And for a second, let me remove the opening. So the whole idea is that again from the side, we work with those profiles. So for example, we will have something like this. So those profiles from the side, you can see, I extend with those lines. So those lines, for example, if I quickly draw them bigger, you can see that these profiles cut each other. And the way how I constructed this one was simply um, that's another thing I would like to, to point out. So if, for example, I only show you those lines. So here you see this is seen from the side and this is seen from the top. And you see actually from the top they overlay really nicely. Here this top line is flat and what I did is Let me for a second hide those parts. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I forgot to to show this part as well. Yeah, I need those actually. 
So I have my boundary box. I have this line on the side. I create those lines and project them through. So you see that the back arc here is sitting on this line as well. Maybe from the top I have this line, but how do I now then figure out where everything actually perfectly meets, kind of like on this line. And this is maybe, for example, one of the drawing situations you might have. And you, s you might have noticed that there was a little bit of geometry I was hiding. So for example, what you see here is a small rectangle. So from this point, this one where my mouse is, I made a straight line going up. And we know two point perspective, those lines are going parallel straight up, for example, to the bonding box. And where this line touches this corner, I started drawing this line to the vanishing point. And then where this line touches my line here, I basically have figured out this point somewhere there. And from there, for example, I could make a straight line down. So those two lines where they meet, that is where this point moved inwards and this point moved downwards. And this way you can work on a cube with two flat profiles and then project the curve into the object that should be arced. So and you see if I take this idea and duplicate it and let me move this one over to here. You see there again, there is actually the same concept working. And if I, for example, move this one maybe to there, now of course I have to adjust this line, but you will see that there as well, is a small rectangle. You see? So that's a way how you can easily create from a very boxy object, something like this, where just the sides are arced, also an object where the top part is arced. And again, you make use of your boundary box, side profiles, and then make heavy use of those construction planes you can project inside. But how do we now turn this into this with the opening? So let's see what we have. This is kind of like our design. I know I have, for example, those lines here. And this is now in perspective. One thing to be really, really uh, careful about is you can see that, again, this line here is, is, it is actually an arc, but it is linear, the way how it feels. And this profile here really nicely bends. So eyeballing here will probably lead into a big disaster if you think that, well, I just take this surface and subdivide it a few times, so I just draw those arcs in. Because from here to there, those two arcs kind of like bend them more and more, they go towards the vanishing point. So instead of um, simply eyeballing it, I have just to construct it. However, now our problem is how do I figure out where those corner points of this rectangle are lying on this arced surface so I find those corner points of the openings of my where my toes goes in. And the same method actually applies. So let me select some of the elements and then show you here what I have. Oh, 
Okay, so I have my top profile. And from this top profile, for example, I can create lines straight down. And you see, if I rotate my view, those lines are actually the yellow ones. They are on my boundary box and the orange lines, they go right into my cube. And then from this arc, I could draw lines from an arc to an arc. And then where those lines, for example, meet those vertical lines, I figured out there are my cutting points. However, now, if I am inside a per perspective drawing, how do I figure out now from where to where to draw those lines? And again, we can easily make use of our uh, boundary box in this case again. So let's say, for example, from here, I simply draw a line from the vanishing point through there till it hits my boundary box. So for example, something like this. So you see like it goes from those points to the boundary box, the start at the end. And actually at those positions there and there, I simply draw a straight line down till, for example, it hits my arc. And then this way I figured out that from this point now, I simply can draw a line back to the vanishing point. And you see now I have figured out where on this arc I have to start drawing this line and then it cuts all these points. However, having a starting point and an end point is not really sufficient to perfectly create or estimate those arcs, specifically with an object where the front and the top face is arced. So we have to deal with a lot of um, perspective distortion and foreshortening to deal with. Um, but that's not really complicated. What we have to do is just we we repeat this process one more time. So for example, seen from the top, I decide one or two additional places, draw my vertical lines down, and then for example, I try to do exactly the same trick again with drawing from the vanishing point through those points till I hit my boundary box and then from the boundary box draw a line down till it hits this arc and then there for example I have this distance transferred into here and then if I from there draw a line to the vanishing point you see these lines cut this blue uh, this yellow line there so there this way I figured out my other points and then with four points, I can easily construct kind of like an arc like this. And if I go into like a perspective view, maybe like this, there you can see now how, for example, this line compared to this, this they seem to fan out to the right. Eyeballing is again something we always try to tend to do, but specifically with surfaces that are not cubical, but are arced. And like in this case, when they're arced in two different directions, um, your eyes really likes to play tricks on you. So I found it's always better to trust your construction skill than just your, your eyeballing. Because very often uh, what you think the way how it should look can actually be not the way how it has to look. And here is just everything cleaned up a little bit. So now if you compare the way how this line feels compared to this line and this line, it is actually quite interesting to see the, 
how the space between them develops. So you see that this is bigger, smaller, and bigger. You can see that there is smaller and thicker, similar here, but the effect in the front line is not as noticeable on the back line. And yeah, so that's basically really all the tricks that is there to, to construct a complicated surface where you project a two-dimensional outline from a boundary box onto a surface that is, for example, art, by simply, again, making use of all your uh, drawing tools and all those different steps with small construction planes you can project into your drawing.